WLFE, DB Radio. Are you ready? Live from the Metal Mayhem Studios in Rochester, New York. We are gold. We are gold. And heard around the world by metalheads just like you. This is Metal Mayhem ROC. Heavy metal music. Your weekly dose of metal music. Interviews, album reviews, news, and more. Want to be part of the show? Send us a message through our website, MetalMayhemROC.com, or hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. Search Metal Mayhem ROC. It's getting nice and heavy. And now, welcome to tonight's host, John the Vernomatic Verno. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the last week of Rocktober, the preferred month of thrashers and bashers around the world. As always, Thursday nights, brand new content drops. Visit the MetalMayhemROC.com website. There you'll find direct streaming links to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. While you're there, download some past shows, subscribe, review. That kind of stuff always helps. Sign up for our email list. This way you'll receive weekly updates on new shows, merch promos, free giveaways, But more importantly, it'll give you a notification for our Monday night live radio show that I host on thatmetalstation.com. It's a three-hour live radio show. I play music from the last 50 years. There's a chat room where you could sign up and get in there and talk with bangers from around the globe. It's really cool. It's a great way to bring your Metal Monday in for a landing. Tonight's show, I have the band Resistant Bite. Tommy Skio, formerly of Tesla, he started up a new band in 2019. Tommy and Steve Stokes, the other guitarist, called me up the other day. We had a great conversation. They explained how the band got together, share their unique chemistry on writing, and we pretty much take a deep dive into the debut album. They give us their input on the different songs. I share my input. This is a great band. They have that classic 80s sound, but yet they stay current with the new landscape of 2021. The second half of tonight's show, I do an exclusive interview with rock photographer Timmy McCrum. Now, this is a good one. 40 years ago this past week, Van Halen opened up for the Rolling Stones down in Florida at the Tangerine Bowl. Van Halen was finishing up their 81 Fair Warning Tour, The Stones were on tour for their Tattoo You track across America, and Van Halen opened up. It was one of the last times Van Halen has ever opened up for anyone. Tim went there as a young rock photographer, and he's here tonight to share his story about, I'm not going to let too much out of the bag, but how he got creative about getting his equipment into this concert because it was a very tight security show at the time. It was when they first started using the metal wands. So Tim's here to tell us about how he got it in there, the scene that was going on, and how Van Halen went toe-to-toe with the legendary Stones in this show. So that's what we got tonight. And do us a favor. We invite you to visit podchaser.com, punch in Metal Mayhem ROC right in the search box, and we will come right up. Please rate and review these episodes. We're trying to get some traffic on the review sites for the show, and it really helps in all the analytics. So that's what we got tonight. Resistant Bite, Tommy Skio and Steve Stokes, and Tim McCrum talking about Van Halen 40 years ago opening for the Stones. I'm the Vernomatic. This is Metal Mayhem ROC. Let's get at it. Hey, listen up. Now get that popcorn ready and grab a seat. Do it! As the Vernomatic presents this week's feature interview, exclusively here on Metal Mayhem ROC. So let's see, today we got an exciting one. We have on the line from Nashville, Tennessee, I believe, or somewhere in the south, we have Tommy Skio and Steve Stokes of Resist and Bite. New album just dropped. It's a fantastic piece of... uh, rock and roll, hard rock, however you want to label it. Let's get them on here. Tommy and Steve, welcome to Metal Mayhem. How you doing, man? We're in Nashville, yeah. What's going on, man? Verno. <laughs> you both are in Nashville then, I take it. We are. We're working on some new songs, just having some fun. Yeah, dude, we're already um, we're already working on the second album today. That, that's great. We're going to get a quick recap of the band. Tell us about how you guys came together. 
give a roster lineup of the excellent new band, and then we'll take a deep dive into that debut album. Yeah, dude. Well, uh, we, you know, we were all introduced by uh, a friend of ours who is our drummer, Dave Parks. He is the, uh, he's the great connector. And uh, yeah, he, he connected us all. And Tommy and uh, Dave did the skin suit record uh, a couple years ago. And then, and then Dave was like, man, let's do this for real. Like, let's, you know, let's do, let's do a full on band with, with, you know, members and everything. So uh, basically Tommy gave Dave a CD and uh, Dave came over to my house about two years ago for Thanksgiving and popped it in the CD player. And I was like, and I didn't know it was Tommy. I just, he was just like, you got to check this out, man. So I checked it out and I was like, dude, we got to do this. This is badass. So uh, I took the song and, put it in pro tools and chopped it up and added some stuff in it and uh nailed it back to tommy didn't know tommy tommy didn't know me and he's like who is this guy man we got to do this this is this is badass so and that song ended up being uh the first song that we put out the the myth i'm living so who knew each other tommy knew dave well, I knew Dave, yes, and we had done a record, and Steve and Dave were in a band for the longest time, so they knew each other, and they knew Brian. We all kind of knew each other except Nathan, and we had another singer at the very beginning, we were, but that didn't work out, so then that's when Nathan came in, was after we were already together for a few months, and then uh, that's when it really just happened. I mean, I met Nate, I drove up to Atlanta. We got in the car, I played him all the CDs with vocals, without, whatever, and we just really kind of bonded and became friends in four or five hours on the drive up to uh, Kentucky where we were working, man, and and it's been on till the break of dawn till then. So let's see, let's get a geographical. Uh, Tommy, you live in Nashville. Steve, where do you live? I live in Florida, actually. Yeah, uh, Tommy's in Florida. I'm in Nashville. Brian Powell, bass player, he's in Nashville. He's kind of my neighbor. He's one holler over, as we say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nathan Oots is a uh, singer, and he's in he's in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And Dave, uh, you know, he plays uh, he plays all all. He's all always the time. playing everywhere, all over the world. Dave so you lives, never know where he is. Dave lives in his car. No, I'm just kidding. He lives in Cincinnati, and uh, but he comes down to Nashville and plays gigs all the time. So, okay, so it's a sort of a southern connection. And uh, Michael Rosen produced this album. Has a long history of. Working, uh, Tommy worked with him with Tesla, Testament, uh, Death Angel, some punk stuff. How did Rosen get involved with this release? Um, you know what, man? We were thinking about producers and all kinds of people that, you know, we're doing it ourselves, whatever. And I just one day, all of a sudden, just, I mean, it's not like Mike wasn't on my radar, or, you know. I mean, I, we're friends. It's just, I just thought, man, why am I not? What about Mike Rosen? He would be great, man, to try and get in here. And so I just called him to see if he was free. And he loved the idea. And once we sent him some songs, he was just in, you know? Yeah, he was the perfect fit for it, too. He came and uh, watched us uh, rehearse a couple of times and help us uh, to rearrange the songs to get ready to record. And it just it, it just gelled, man. So, and a great engineer, too. And the sound of the record's a testament to that. He, he did a great job. So the new album, Debut, it doesn't have a name. What is it, just the debut album? That's the name of it, Resist and Bite? It's Resist and Bite. Resist and bite. <laughs> 14 songs, 49 minutes, each song between three and four minutes. The production is fresh. It's easy to digest, guys. It has that very old school sound to it, but yet not overly produced. Uh, very live sound. That's the interpretation I got. Dude, you're you're nailing it, man. That's awesome. We did it. Uh, we cut the album in 20 days at uh, Soundstage. No, no weekends off, nothing. 20 uh, days straight, brutal, straight through. Dude, 20 days straight at Soundstage in uh, Nashville, which is a really, really nice studio. Great studio. Mike got us a hook up there, and we, we camped out, man. So 20 straight days. Was it a live-in studio or, well, obviously... No. We, we, you know, we, we went, you know, it was in Nashville. So Brian and, and Steve were able to go home and the rest of us, uh, Nate's sister was here. Uh, so he went over there and me and, uh, Michael Rosen and Dave were in a, what do you call it? A Airbnb. Uh, yeah, Airbnb thing. Yeah. So that was that. We just go there every morning and knock it out all day long. Yep. Yeah, for 20 days, 21 days straight. Tommy, you're a veteran. You know, you've been doing this 30, 40 years. And congratulations on um, uh, for sobriety. I've done some research and 
uh, you know, congratulations on um, putting that behind you. The question I have here, what is the age difference of the band? Tommy, you're probably closer to 60. What, what about the other guys? I'll be 60 in February. Yeah, I'm, I'm 35. So he's a little young. And, and uh, Dave, and, uh, Dave and, and Nate and Brian are all around the same age. Uh, I guess I don't, I don't know how old everyone is, but they're – Well, Nate's 50-something. Oh, well, yeah, okay, yeah, so – yeah, uh, Brian. The other guys are in their forties. Yeah, Brian and Dave are about you know ten years older than me. So we got the whole we have the whole spectrum, man. We have you know two, three decades almost of uh, you know musical influence going on here. Basically, I was rocking when 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 Steve got spit out. <laughs> yeah, Tommy, this is like your trophy band. You know, older guys get married for the second time, have a trophy wife. It sure is a special thing. I I don't think of it so much like that as much as just. It's just been great. Everything just flows really easily. Everything we do just seems to happen and be just, we do stuff effortlessly and have really a lot of fun doing it. And everything turns out really cool. And I'm just, I'm really happy with that. And it's, it's just a lot of fun. And I never, who knew that I would have another great band? I mean, I thought maybe, you know, Tesla was the last thing for me. And I'm not a real smoother kind of guy. So to have another band have gotten together all natural, how I like things to happen is kind of a, a big deal, you know, and, and who would have thought that I would have another band with this kind of energy and this, this, this awesomeness again, you know, it's, it's, it's great. Let's talk about these songs, how they yeah. come together, were they conceived in the studio? Was it stuff that any leftovers or is it just fresh resistant bite material? Oh man, it's, it's, it's all brand new. Um, Tommy was kind of the, you know the the main songwriter on the album. We have some co- collaboration like I and uh, Scream. We 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 did together, and uh, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, Tommy is uh, at, he's got a little assembly line over. It yeah, and it's not it wasn't by design or anything like that. It's just that those are the songs that happen. I mean, as, as we speak now, just last night we finished a song of Steve. So trying to get an incorporate and we want the next record to be have a little bit of a different vibe so so yeah but we're all right and stuff and it just it, it, again it came together very effortlessly we just would put out a piece of music nate would write over it and boom beautiful song and it would happen over and over and over pretty great yeah and we you know we fleshed all these songs out we did like pretty much full-blown demos for them at my little studio and yeah. uh and uh actually that's how we did myth that's how that one came out but then we you know we decided to do a fully produced album so we we already had everything kind of demoed out so we knew the parts that we wanted to do when we went to the studio which is pretty cool what's interesting is like myth is basically the very first song we recorded together that recording that we put out it was a demo and we had a radio interview so we thought we better bring something and it just happened that you know that song worked out we put a video to it and that's like, and that's our first time, first met Steve the day we recorded that. I mean, there's just something there, man. It's been a good fit, man. It's a good fit. Yeah. All right. Well, right off the start, uh, I have two favorite songs. One of my first favorite, Till Tomorrow. Very old school kind of uh, happy 80s song. Sounds like it has the perfect recipe for maybe the next single if you'd ever want to go that way. I'm really actually surprised that that was the song that I usually it's a more rocking song people go for, but I love that song. And you know what? The way it's going, we're just putting out a video for every song. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we get done with this record and we have a video for more than half 
for more than half the songs on the record. But uh, that's a great song. Love it, dude. That's a great song. It has a has a lot going on in there. A lot of a lot of layers. I think we might have driven Mike a little crazy with yeah. that. It's got it's got <laughs> beat, beat, mandolin acoustic guitars oh dude first B-ball. time i played a b3 ever in my life was on that record on that track and man it's like operating a spaceship man it was fun a lot of fun don't get me wrong i like a lot of the heavier stuff but my top two maybe today you know saturday there was two different ones but the song crazy that song really kicks ass i think it's Thanks. just i think it's just something where it uh reminds me of a better time they're just uplifting yeah. songs it- that's so cool, man. I'm glad you're you're getting a, a get. You know, it's conjuring up a feeling from you because a lot of our songs do that for me. They conjure up colors and feelings and vibes. And that song, man, it's like got a pop thing going on, but it really rocks at the same time. Love it, man. I love how my guitars with the vocal on the choruses. It's just pretty rad. Now, uh, the album starts off. I think the heaviest song on the album, a darker song, "Blood on Me." as I digested it six or seven times, I started really feeling the sequence of the album. Why blood on me as the opener? I don't know, man. It just kind of, it kind of, it just kind of fell together that way. We were contemplating having fate be first, but we didn't want to start it with that kind of hip hoppy intro, you know? Yeah. And there wasn't much of a discussion. It was like, Mike said it should absolutely be that. We were already kind of on that page. Everyone was just like, yeah, it's yeah. That, it just, you know? It's got a killer intro on it. It's just a nice way to kind of, ease into it although it eases into it pretty quickly and then it turns gets pretty metal right off the bat <laughs> yeah. yeah it does that's actually my favorite song on the, on the album because it, it has it has every element of, of music that i i like i mean it's got it's got 80s metal it's got 90s metal and it's got the the uh you know the harmonized priest solo in the middle and it, and, and has a drum solo too yeah that so, long roll he does at the end's rad yeah well, I'm going to save the rest of my input on these other songs, but that leads me to your guys' favorite songs on this. What holds a special place for you? Yeah, we were talking about that the other day, and I said fate, and I, I that's still kind of a there, you know, and someone just posted on my Facebook thing today. They love the, the jams I'm doing in between all the verses and parts and fate, and I really like that, man. I, fate's got just a rocking thing, but, man, it's I can't say that truthfully because, of course, I love the whole record. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, man, it's got uh, a little bit of everything on there. It's it's kind of hard to choose w- what your favorite song is because it's you know it's a depends on what kind of mood you're in, really. But yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, blood blood would be mine if I had to choose a second favorite. I got I got to put away my inner, inner metalhead, and I would want to say up in flames, but put, putting that aside, scream is a really badass song, yeah. and that one kind of fell together. That's one that Dave. Uh, kind of came up with the idea for and then tommy wrote the the riff and then and then we kind of fleshed the rest of it out in the studio which was kind of cool yeah that was cool different for us yeah
And dude, Home is a really cool song. Um, it's kind of a, a simpler song, but the way we recorded it was totally badass. I mean, that is the only full blown song on the record that we recorded live. That what you hear there is completely live. Say what you want. No, well, yeah, say what you want. The, the last song, the acoustic. Uh, but Home is is all live. The guitar solo is live. The only thing we o- overdubbed was a uh, background harmony. I mean, his vocals live. Yeah, the it's vocal crazy. is live. Whole- that's what my notes have home uh 80s feel to ish great this must be a great live song totally impromptu middle of the set kind of song dude that's so funny you say that because live man people seem to really eat it up and i never even saw that i don't know where that comes from but that's that's cool yeah yeah we didn't think that people would dig it live because it's kind of slower and then we we just busted it out at the show and they loved it went crazy well, let's give your bass player, Brian Powell, some love. According to the Vernomatic uh, notes, let's see, on Bombs, there comes that bass again. Uh, killer bass. Uh, fate. Bass is grooving. Tell us about Brian. What kind of uh, input did he have in on this? Because that bass is killing. We just tell him what to do. Okay. He- <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you, Dude, Bri- Brian-, Brian had never played with the pick before, which surprised me because he's-, he's from um- – He's from the north northwest, you know, uh, just outside Portland, Vancouver, Washington, and uh, he's he's a he's a punk guy, punk metal guy, you know. Maybe I'm speaking too too much for him here, but I mean, I was surprised that he never played. Yeah, he never uh, played with, with a pick. pick when we got him playing with a pick. And uh, yeah, dude. So yeah, the intro on uh, Bob, I think he uses a bass wow man. He's got yeah, yeah. It's it's really really cool. Yeah, so I tell you, that's a great way to kick that one off. We're talking with Tommy Skio, Steve Stokes of the band Resistant Bite. Brand new album, the debut album's out everywhere. Visit resistandbite.com. There you'll find all their socials and all that stuff you need to stay in touch with the band. Now, I have some more uh, quick questions about the album. Maybe you can answer them. You two are the guitarists. So how do you split up the leads? Is there an arrangement you have? Is it 90, 10, Tommy, Steve? No, we don't. It's, that's again just something that, just like in Tesla, we never talk about that stuff. We just kind of. It's funny in this band we talk about. Like at first, I started doing a lot of the songs, and because of that, on the demos, I played a lot of the solos. So at first, I was doing a lot of the solos. So if we talk about it ever, it's just like we got to get you in playing more leads and more harmonies. And now we're we're starting to get there with that. So it's it's cool. Yeah, you know, Tommy and I both do full blown demos for things before we show them to each other or anyone else in the band and and by default we usually go ahead and you know put a guitar solo on it because we can't we can't help ourselves right you know so and tommy just he already had you know he had more, more time to write on the last album so he ended up taking a little bit of the, the lion's share on it but we're, we're trying to uh you know we just we just go for it man we, like you said we don't really we don't really we try and keep everything natural and flowing and we don't really talk about stuff much and just kind of let it happen maybe say hey let's get together and then you know we just go from there man we just rock like that it's awesome we love harmonized leads but we try not to overdo it you know right. <laughs> <laughs> uh this probably may be a nathan question but uh who is mary that's the mother Mary. That's uh, that's Jesus. I don't know, man. That's some Jesus shit in uh, Nate's mind or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. To tell you the truth, but I love it. It's a song about uh, I don't. It's way. This is definitely Nate's alley, but I yeah. mean, you know, it's rosary beads in there. You know, it's very, it's very much. Uh, it's one of them songs that conjures up a vibe again, like we were talking about earlier, which is what I love about it. Although I don't know exactly what he's saying. And, and we're not we're not a Christian band, but uh, Nathan definitely is uh, he's into that. He's very yeah. very. Yeah. Really- spiritual and it comes out in, in his lyrics on, on a few of the songs yeah. well my, my notes for that um has a very western twang to it they're definitely reaching for something um got anything, but, yeah that was uh mike i think that you're referring to probably that little acoustic thing in the beginning that was mike's addition mike's like hey, pick up the acoustic go go do some some licks you know like you're on the front porch there or something yeah yeah, yeah but that's what it was it was like um yeah, <laughs> just a twangy kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the instrumental, Afterneath. Uh, oh. Conscious effort to have an instrumental. Was it a just never had lyrics? Kick-ass Again, little piece. Happened there is it was a song that I demoed, and Nate never or no one ever put any lyrics to it. And one day Dave just said, you know what? That, that song could be a, 
an instrumental and we thought about it and, and kind of tossed the idea around for a while. And by the time we got to the record, we were sold on it and it became an instrumental. And now we're thinking about putting one on the next record and, and also not by design, just because we happen to have another song like that that didn't get used lyrically and just stands on its own musically. So it's kind of happening naturally, really. Just like I said, and that's a real key thing in all this, I believe. Yeah, each of these songs has its own vibe. If it's a rocker, it rocks. If it's a mellow, I hate the way use the term poppy, it's it's good. Yeah. It's 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 fantastic. There's, there's like rock and stuff that has different, in, like crazy, where it's got a pop influence, but it's definitely rocking and that that kind of mixture. I love that stuff. Like up in flames. Oh, dude, Up in Flames is kind of a, a throw to Judas Priest that begins yeah. with the, you know, the big synth thing, and then Tommy comes in on the, the tremolo guitar, you know, it's, and then Dave kicks it off. notes uh, up in flames Dame, Dave's drums kill this song's a rocker what is this Tempton and KK yeah yeah <laughs> twin guitar attack swear there to god go. those are my notes so um that's funny dude it's fun recording that one uh I was uh doing that harmony on the uh on the verse and I was doing it every other time Tommy's like do it every time you got to do it every time we got to do this the right way I don't know I just love it Last song on the album, Say What You Want. My interpretation, another 80s kind of song. Is there a ukulele in it? <laughs> it's a mandolin. Oh, okay. That was another uh, moment song. That was the very last thing that we did in the studio. Last day. On the 20th day, after celebrating finishing the album all night the night before <laughs> yeah. in Midtown Nashville. And uh, we went in, and Mike's like, hey, man, how about that acoustic song? I, I got all the mics set up. Why don't you guys just go jam it out? So we, we did it live, and there it is. Last little bit of comment. It goes to the Say What You Want song again. It has a little bit of a Zeppelin tangerine feel. Were you guys, okay. all, when you were doing it at the end, were, were you, now they explain the scenario, were you all sitting there, one take, just do it? Is that how it yep. was? Rocking. I love that song. I didn't, man. Yeah. That, that, Thank that, you very I'm, much. I'm going to take that as a compliment. I love, dude, Tangerine is one of my, one of my favorite songs. That's weird that you said that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty B-side song. Well, it has that feel that um, it's not too serious. And sometimes those songs that are just thrown together, not out of non-preparation, but just the feeling of it, those are the best. You know, it's just that's it song by the way that's uh yeah, that's a, Nay wrote that a long time ago a song he's had in he's a he's a beach guy man and that's it's got a kind of a beachy vibe to it and uh he's been holding on to it forever man and and that's you know it was it was time to cut it so he played it for us one day and we're like dude we should rock that so you started the interview off the phone call saying that you're in the studio doing stuff for the follow-up um we're just on some songs over at steve's yeah uh, what's the, uh, tell us a little bit about this Halloween gig you got going on this weekend with Eddie Trunk and the costume. Well, what's this all about? Uh, uh, October 31st, Halloween, we're going to be at Mad Life in Woodstock, Georgia, which is right outside of Atlanta. And uh, Seven Year Witch is going to open up, and Eddie Trunks is, is going to host the show, which is going to be awesome. We are super excited about it. We've been rehearsing all weekend for it, actually, so... Now uh, we got we're, we're using our bonus day here to to track some track some songs, but yeah, um, we definitely want to invite everyone to go go get tickets if you're in the, in the area. You know, it's going to be it's gonna yeah, be if you're not, I'm flying in. You know, what Rock is it. now? You haven't had much chance to play consistently. What are the touring plans? What's 2022 involve? What's the landscape looking like? 
as we speak, we're trying to get on anything we can get on a little tour where we can get seen by someone else's fans, anything really. We're just, we got another show in January at the beginning of next year, but in between them, we're just trying to play wherever we can, man. Even if it's one-off spot shows, we'll do that. If we can get on a little run, that would be good. Whatever. We're just uh, keeping it open. You know, times are still a little, uh, little, little weird, getting less weird. Uh, we had big plans last summer. You know, we, we had a, uh, a little, little run scheduled, and obviously that didn't work out. But, yeah, we, we're, we're, we're ready to get back at it. And uh, it just, you know, just, uh, just the times, man. <laughs> Again, the band Resist and Bite debut album is out visit resistandbite.com there you'll find all their socials and all that stuff you need to stay in touch with the band i've been talking with tommy skio and steve stokes guys thanks for uh spending the afternoon with me um i hope this interview has laid down a template for the listeners it's a it's a fantastic release and uh, again congratulations on making uh instantly my one in my top 10 of the year Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having us, man. Berno, we love you, man. Thanks for having us. You're welcome, guys. We'll stay in touch, and always remember, keep it heavy. All right, man. Rock on. See you, guys. Metal for Life. Thanks for listening to Metal Mayhem ROC. Check out our websites at MetalMayhemROC.com and MetalForever.com for information on upcoming concerts, podcasts, archives, and all sorts of info. Please like, follow, and share with everyone, even your non-metal friends. Catch us next time on WLFE-DB Radio.